Hey guys, so in the next six videos or so, we're going to be talking about permissions. And just a quick history lesson before we start. So before the advent of the PC, computer systems were centralized. What this meant was that a computer would be located in one building on campus, at a university for example, while multiple users were able to log in to that computer via secure shell. So in order to make this feasible, scientists had to come up with a way to secure the files and folders. And this meant that users had to be limited in their file accessions. So some files had permissions to read, write, to, and execute, while others did not. And this depended on who you were as a user. So in the Linux world, there are three groups in which permissions apply to. There's the owner, who is the creator of the file, and this user would have control over its access. And then there's the group, which is one or more users who are given access to a file or directories. And then there's the world, who is everyone else. So to display the user and group names and numeric IDs of a calling process, we use ID. So let's just try that. And we're just going to look at the two main IDs here, which is the UID. And that's going to be the user ID, which is mapped to a username. And there is also a group ID, which specifies which group you're in. And there can be multiple users with the same group ID, while users can only have one ID. So on a Linux platform, the user accounts are defined in the etc password file, and groups are defined in the etc group file. And there's also etc shadow, which holds information about the user's password. So to reinforce what you just learned, try these follow-up questions. 